guys, welcome to Vlogmas episode 9! Uh, so you've probably been here for a little bit, so you know how we're doing Vlogmas this year. Uh, we are doing a Disney tip per day for travelling to Disney parks around the world. Uh, so every single day in December, up until the 25th, we'll be doing a new Disney tip. And today, I think we're doing a tip that can be applied to most parks. Our tip today is going to be about stuff to do when the parks get crowded. When you're planning your trip uh, for Walt Disney World, Tokyo Disney, Shanghai Disney, any parks around the world, uh, one thing that you could do just to try and avoid the uh, parks being really crowded is to have a look at crowd calendars. Now every single park that I've travelled to has had a crowd calendar on the internet somewhere. Usually it's not um, done by Disney, they're not the ones who publish it. Other people will take the data and then they'll make their own crowd calendars. But however much research you do, you often find that you'll probably hit a park, especially in a two week vacation, when it is really really busy. Sometimes it's a blessing because you're forced to do stuff that you won't do when the park is quiet. When the park's quiet you tend to just do all the characters and all the rides because it's quiet so you can do everything. Uh, but when it's busy you kind of have to be a little bit more careful about what you select to do to make sure that you don't end up in a queue for a good couple of hours like I did in Shanghai Disneyland story for another time. So first thing to do when you get to the park for when it's going to be a really busy day is make sure you get yourself a fast pass. Make sure you keep having fast passes throughout the whole day. So as soon as you have the option to get another fast pass, go and get one. Just make sure you keep having them. This will make sure that at least you are able to get onto some rides. Uh, so keep doing that. Also, if you know it's going to be a busy day, uh, bring stuff to do in the queues. I'm going to do another tips video somewhere later in December on stuff to do in queues uh, at Disney, at Disney parks, parks. I was gonna say Disney World, but at Disney parks. And so, uh, yeah, hang on for that one. There'll be some good tips in there. Even if you have started doing the queues, you might not actually want to stand in one. So, what can you do if you don't want to go and stand in the queues? Loads of stuff. You can do absolutely loads of stuff. One of my favourite things to do is shop. <laughs> shopping um, is shopping, actually, and especially earlier in the morning or any time really, up until about three, four o'clock in the afternoon. The shops will be relatively empty. I say relatively empty, it's still, you know, a really popular place to be. Uh, but the shops at, at the earlier hours of the day in any of the parks should be should be pretty easy going. So if you don't really like crowds and the rides are really busy, perhaps go and hang out in in the shops. And if you're in one of the sort of Magic Kingdom-y, Disneyland-y parks, um, having a few hours in Main Street is super enjoyable. There's loads of stuff to see there. There's people cutting glass or or you know molding glass with flames and stuff and etchings and people building things and then there's people within stores uh, the cast members within stores will happily explain to you about art in the stores uh, you could go and buy music from the parks uh, see in Tokyo Disney they have a magic shop so you can just watch the cast members do magic it's amazing so yeah just pull yourself back into Main Street and just spend a few hours there and let everybody else stand in queues for a couple of hours another amazing thing to do at shops is to look at the windows I didn't do enough at this uh, in Magic Kingdom and Walt Disney World and I, I very much regretted it because the windows especially on the Emporium store are so beautiful and very very well done and feature some of your favorite Disney movies uh, that it's cool to go and spend some time there and just look to see how they you know what they like what they look like and how they work so you guys will know it's not just the windows that are so spectacular at Disney parks the whole theming of the parks are amazing it's one of the things which make Disney so fantastic and that's another thing that you could do actually is rather than do rides and shows and shop and eat you could just walk around the parks and take in the theming uh, a side bit to this is you can walk around the parks take in the theming and try to spot those hidden mickeys uh, hidden mickey finding is a really fun thing to do when the parks are super busy uh, don't spend time in the queues just go around uh, get a list on your phone there's usually loads of lists on the internet uh, for of hidden mickeys around the parks you could get a list uh, you could go around trying to find them and then you can really take in the theming of the park because you'll be searching around for these Hello Mickeys and just noticing all these little bits that you don't really notice when you're just running from ride to ride to ride. One of the great examples of this is the Pascal uh, game that you can play in Walt Disney World in the Magic Kingdom. So around by the Rapunzel Tangle Toilets area, I think you can find 10 hidden Pascals that are it, around just in that area. There's there's no ride, I mean the, the Peter Pan ride is closed, but there's no Tangled ride, uh, but you can look at her tower, you can visit those amazing toilets and then you can just spend some time looking for the 10 pascals uh, and, and that's a beautiful thing to do with, with no cue and will completely allow you to suck in all that beautiful theming 
one of my other favorite things to do in Disney parks is eat, eat. <laughs> so I eat, eat, yeah, just eat. Eating is another really good thing to do when it's super crowded, it's, especially if it's outside, or oh, really well, it has to be outside of normal eating hours. Uh, so when we travel around the world, we tend to go, move into this sort of two meals a day flow, where we have a, a, sort of a brunch really, around 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock in the morning, and then we'll do an early dinner around four or five. These are not typical times for people to be sitting down and eating, which means the restaurants are a little bit more relaxed. So if you do this, you can eat at times when it's a little bit more chilled out, then when everyone else is eating, you could go back onto the rides. Another thing to make use of in the morning is shows. Uh, it tends to be when people get to Disney parks, the first thing that they want to do is rides. That's the thing they're really excited for, like get me onto the rides. Uh, so the shows in the morning tend to have a much, much shorter queue. So uh, you'll see in one of our most recent Disney Sea vlogs that we go straight to the Little Mermaid show in the morning uh, because it's always so empty then and it gets so busy later on in the day. So I recommend that if it's if it's a busy day in the park, you know it's going to be busy, do the shows that you want to do earlier on. If they You'll have less of a wait and then it will be done and then when other people are doing them later, you can go on to be doing your rides. So now for some other park specific tips. Uh, in Tokyo Disney, a couple of things to do when it gets really quite packed is, uh, first of all, expiry, expiry, I always say it wrong, expiry, <laughs> the Tokyo uh, Disney's Disney Springs area, downtown Disney area, is called Xperia, and it's on. It's on. It has its own monorail stop on the Tokyo Disney Resort monorail. That is a beautiful shopping center with uh, my second favorite Disney store in the whole world. My first favorite Disney store is in Shibuya, also in Tokyo. Um, but this is my my second favorite Disney store in the world is is in Tokyo. Uh, Tokyo Disney Xperia. Yes, the downtown. Disney slash Disney Springs area, Tokyo. Uh, they also have some general great stores there and some really cool places to eat. So that's a fun place to hang out if it's really, really busy. If you don't want to leave the parks, in Disneyland, I recommend taking the uh, little raft over to Tom Sawyer Island. They have a Tom Sawyer Island in Tokyo Disneyland. That's really good fun. Also, taking the canoes around the equivalent of the rivers of America. Uh, that's also <laughs> quite entertaining. And it has all, always has a very, very short queue for that one, but you have to go when the sun's still up, so bear that in mind. In Disney Sea, uh, go check out Fortress Explorations. It's a super, super fun place to hang out. It's, um, and do some explorationing, exploring exploring do some exploring <laughs> it's a strange castle that's next to a volcano in disney sea that has a bunch of different rooms that you to go into and to find out different things about exploration uh, science um yeah go in yeah have a look my last disney sea vlog that i we we looked around it it's a it's a, there's no ride there but it's it's just a nice place to go and, and look around and see some really cool stuff. For Walt Disney World, I don't really have any tips for Hollywood Studios, but for Animal Kingdom, going to see the animals that are outside, the, that are out around sort of the tree by the front park area is a really cool thing to do and is not that busy. Also a super fun thing to do is just to walk around the Tree of Life and see how many animals that you can see in it. You feel like you've seen that tree and then you spend a good few hours looking at it and you're like, yep, I'm, I've still not seen everything. It's so intricate and there are so many things. Like, it, you know, you can see the tree from so many different places in the park and you can say, oh, I can see the chameleon and oh, I can see the gorilla. Uh, but then when you get to the base of it, you realize the carving goes all the way down and then by the bug's life bit, some of it goes a little bit inside. Uh, so yeah, it's a, uh, it, you know, you could spend a good few hours looking at that when the park is super, super busy and it is super fun. Kids in particular, absolutely love it. In Epcot, the easiest thing to do is to spend some time in the World Showcase and in particular in some of the sort of museum-y things to do in the World Showcase. I love the museum in the Japan Pavilion, obviously. I also really like the cute little museum that they show uh, Frozen inspiration stuff for in the Norway Pavilion. And, and if you really want to get a really repetitive song in your head, go see the 360 video in the Canadian Pavilion. Uh, it is very dated, very dated but the song is great, uh, it's air conditioned in there, and um, yeah, it might be going soon. So, you know, rumors, nothing concrete, um, but uh, yeah, it might be your last chance so you can go hang out there. My favorite thing to do in Walt Disney World uh, for when the crowds get really, really busy is Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom. And actually, when I left, I was upset that I didn't spend more time playing Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom. Uh, I'm gonna do another vlog on this, I think, because it's uh, it's quite, 
it's like understanding it takes quite a lot of effort <laughs> but uh, it just quickly it's a card game uh, which you go around the park with and you interact with uh, sort of screens which are placed at various places around the park and you uh, use cards and battle with cards to try and stop Hades from taking over the Magic Kingdom it's awesome I, I really quite like that there's two things that I like to do in Shanghai Disney when it gets super crowded. First of all, it's the Shanghai Disney Passport. I loved the passport. It's a bit like the Epcot Passport, which you buy in Epcot and you take around the World Showcase and get people from various different countries to sign off and stamp. In Shanghai Disney, you have to find uh, almost hidden uh, sort of... Uh, computery booth thingies uh, and you approach them and you put your Shanghai Disney passport into those machines and they'll stamp them for you. They also have stuff to do uh, for that land that you're in or wherever you get your stamp, uh, some games for you to play which involve looking around the area and or, or some interesting facts about the area and then for you to sort of fill out the passport. It is aimed at kids but I loved it. I thought it was awesome. Also in Tomorrowland, around sunset, around dusk time, there will be a full out rave. I absolutely love this. I thought it was amazing. Uh, but so if you wanna get down and dance uh, for an hour or so, there will be a rave with people showing you how to dance, not like this, better, <laughs> in Shanghai Disney in Tomorrowland. That is a really cool thing to do in the park is super crowded. So that's it for my tips on what to do when the parks get super crowded. I am sure there are loads that I don't know of. So if you guys have any tips uh, about what to do when parks are super packed, um, please leave them down below in the comments. I would love to hear uh, some of the extra things that you can do, uh, which I probably haven't even considered. Uh, but for now, I'll say thank you so much for watching. I don't know what we're doing for weekly, for weekly vlog, if not weekly vlog. I don't know what we're doing for vlog was 10 yet um i'm sort of toying with sources of magic kingdom dessert parties maybe uh yeah we'll figure it out later but for now thank you so much i will see you all for vlogmas 10 okay bye everyone